Well, all right, tonight we are underneath the hood of the my 2018 Silverado here. I've noticed that the dipstick is on the driver's side of the truck. I can't quite remember my 2015, whether it was on the passenger side or not, but that is definitely different. My 12 was on the passenger side. I'm not sure why they changed it to the right-hand side of the truck here. And also they have gone away with the transmission dipstick, which I find strange. Why would you get rid of that? Me personally, I like to check, not have to take it into a dealership to have them look at it to know what my transmission oil is looking like and whatnot. Because even in these new trucks, you can burn up a transmission very easily. And I think you should have the option of being able to check your own transmission fluid. Correct me if I'm wrong if you guys think otherwise, but that is my personal opinion. You should be able to check your own stuff. It's, yes, it's under warranty, whatnot, to take it in, get stuff looked at and whatnot. But it's kind of an inconvenience if you live out of town and whatnot. You got to run it into town. Get it checked if you feel something's off with your transmission. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. With having even just a level truck here, I'm going to have a bucket. I am 5'10", but I need a bucket just so you can see inside here a wee bit better. This huge housing here for your intake is crazy compared to a few of my older trucks. I'm impressed that they've got such large capacity air cleaner and all this. I'll have to do some investigating, see what it all does. See if it's all really worth it. I do like in these vehicles nowadays, looks super easy to get up at your upper struts. I know my 12 was a pain to get at. Even my 15 was a pain to get at. The top of your strut bolts and all that. These ones look actually very easy to get at, which makes it nice if you do do work on your vehicles on your own. And there is absolutely a ton of room inside this hood or underneath this hood. <clears throat> I am going with airbags in my truck and I'm gonna see if this spot here for a secondary battery would be a great spot. Hopefully, maybe I can get an air compressor stuff set up in here so it's up front and then run my wires and whatnot back to the back of the truck for the airbags for when I'm towing and whatnot. I'm not sure if I can do it, but we'll see. And also notice that these engines take a lot thinner oil. My last truck was five, 30 that it took this truck is 0 20 which is kind of interesting to me I'm not sure why they keep getting thinner and thinner what the reasoning behind that is I don't pay what well, big enough attention to that kind of stuff <clears throat> being up here in Canada I'm glad I have a plug-in mounted here which will probably very rarely ever come out if it does because this truck gets parked indoors 99% of the time. <clears throat> but that is what under the hood of these 2018s look like. Lots of room. You can definitely work around. Even back there. I know on my 12 I had to do a oil pressure sensor. And I could not get my hand in there for love nor money. I pretty much had to stand on my head to try even get in there. And it didn't work. This truck, I believe the oil sensor is back in the back, same place, maybe. I'll have to look up and see where all that kind of stuff is. Right now I'm just doing a video on how much room, what it looks like underneath the hood of these trucks. I do notice that, if you can see over in here, there's a lot of opening with the fender covers to the inside of the engine bay, which... To me, if you had puddles and stuff, yes, you do have a cover on your exhaust. It's going to crack your heads. 
or your uh, manifolds. And nothing sounds worse than a truck that's got a cracked manifold. I'm not sure why they didn't try and cover it up a little better, but that is a large gap. I'm not sure why they did that, but that's what it is for now. Maybe I'll try and figure out something to fix that, but for now it's going to stay like that. Coolant, very easy to get at, very easy to read, check, all that good stuff. <clears throat> I'm loving these batteries with your positive here. It's pretty easy to get a, a, a booster cable onto your negative. I know at work a lot of the 08s and stuff, 12s, 13s that we had there, jumping the back holes and whatnot in the winter time was a pain because trying to get it to stay on the negative was a pain. This is great. Pop this, you're good to go, right? <clears throat> this is just what I see underneath the hood today. I. Haven't been able to do too much for content wise. It's been pouring rain out today. I've been super sick, all that kind of stuff. So I'm just kind of making this one up. I know it's kind of boring. I'm just rambling on the last two videos, but I did have a guy ask me about the active louvers, how they work and whatnot. I'm still doing research on that so that I can actually come out with a good video on how everything works and whatnot. I don't want to be talking out my butt as to speak. So I'll try and get that one up maybe tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow or something. Get a few more videos up this month for you guys. If there's anything you're interested in seeing, please let me know. And if you guys haven't already, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, and have a great day.